Imagine a world where cancer no longer kills. A world where heart disease does not maim. A new treatment paradigm for tuberculosis. Or winning the war against diabetes. We can work to change the natural course of diseases from today. In Singapore, patients expect the best from the healthcare system. This starts with meaningful research and innovation. This is what our summit research programs aim to achieve, focusing on health issues where the study of Asian phenotypes offer advantages, and creating truly distinctive programs with translational outcomes that will improve patient care and population health for future generations. With the formation of these research programs, I think we're in a better position now to help them, to propel them to the next level. So the SRP would be providing some seed funding and infrastructure support to do just that so that they can now compete at a more global level. Because research is actually really global. You should be collaborating and engaging the research community both nationally and internationally so that you can really have very very strong and competitive research programs. The other thing that I think uh, we would really like to do is grow our next generation of uh, clinician scientists so that we can continue to excel in clinical and translational research. The ultimate aim, I think, of uh, having this program is to be able to understand the disease processes and use our understanding to develop innovative solutions for better diagnostics and therapeutics to improve health outcomes and, of course, to benefit society as well as hopefully have some economic outcomes as well. I think um, cancer uh, is still a very difficult disease to treat. It is a very common problem that we have uh, in Singapore. About a third of patients will eventually develop cancer and a large percentage of these will eventually die of cancer. So treatment of cancer is still uh, remains uh, an important challenge uh, and very often the treatment failed because of development of resistance to the treatment. And what we have here is a very new uh, cutting-edge uh, modality of treatment using the patient's own immune cells but activating it or making it stronger. Uh, and this kind of treatment can overcome very often the resistance that we get to chemotherapy or to other treatment. Um, and also potentially uh, has less toxicity or long-term uh, side effects than uh, the current treatment that we use. So particularly when we talk about cancer immunotherapy, I'm looking at uh, three particular areas that we already have some level of activities that I hope to um, strengthen and build up. Um, one is in the area of uh, um, T-cell therapy using modified T-cells. Um, this program is largely driven by Professor Dario Campana uh, here at, in our pediatrics department in NUHS. Um, the other one is a um, program based around therapeutic um, antibodies uh, and we have very strong ties within NUS, uh, NCIS as well as ASTA institution in generating different antibodies targeting different new protein targets on cancer cells. And then the third area is in vaccine therapy and again this is a partnership between NCS, NCIS, our immunology program uh, in NUS. Uh, that's looking at dendritic cell vaccine against some of the uh, more novel proteins that are presented on um, cancers like uh, ear, nose and throat cancer uh, and lymphomas and so on. For this summit research program uh, in cancer immunotherapy, we really hope to um, bring together all the current existing expertise that we have on our campus uh, to build a very strong program. Um, that eventually we hope to bring this uh, very cutting-edge type of treatment uh, to the clinic that will eventually benefit our patients. This particular program is really about someone suffering perhaps a, a heart attack 
The risk there is that the heart will become badly scarred and then stretch and then weaken and then become dysfunctional. And if you can interrupt that process, then you can actually alter the whole outlook for that person. And we've got part way down that track with existing treatments, but they're not really good enough because the overall outlook after a severe heart attack is still quite serious, quite ominous. So we'd really like to improve on that. It's uh, the big problem in the world today, as far as I'm concerned, it's number one. So any discovery that's at this kind of fundamental level potentially will be useful uh, for societies throughout the planet. Uh, we are looking at a means of um, diagnosing conditions that people have not used before, signals that have not been evaluated or measured properly or evaluated against a clinical cohort before. We use what we call a translational spectrum, so we look at everything from the bench right through to patients in the clinic. Uh, and what we hope is that we can get information from clinical samples that will help us design the right benchtop experiment, and we can get information from the benchtop experiments that will help us uh, move towards diagnostic tests or treatments in the patient. So it's a to and fro process, how those heart cells respond to stresses and injuries uh, such as low oxygen levels or stretching and distortion, which is the sort of thing the human heart cells suffer when people have heart attacks or have heart failure conditions of one sort or another. So we move smoothly back and forth from bench to person, uh, trying to find answers to move to the next step forward overall. TB is one of the most important infectious diseases globally um, and particularly in Asia. 60% of the world's TB is in Asia so this program is highly relevant to the region and also to Singapore where there's substantial numbers of new TB patients uh, every year. So the big goal um, is to try and improve uh, treatment for TB, to get shorter treatments, to get more effective treatments for TB globally and we've got a number of approaches to that. Firstly to try and find a new drug um, that will be more effective than the current drugs and then to try and find a new combination or way of using different drugs that we currently use to improve the outcomes and thirdly to try and improve the ways that we deliver those treatments to patients to diagnose patients earlier to help them to adhere to the treatment so they complete the course of treatment and get a better chance of cure. That I've described from the beginning of the target discovery through to treatment delivery so we're the only program actually internationally that puts all of that together into one. We're talking about the Diabetes and Metabolism Program. So diabetes is becoming increasingly common in our population. So the interesting thing about chronic disease is that nobody has the solution. That's why there's a research and innovation requirement. I don't think any of the developed countries have worked out how to do this. I think we're only beginning to realise how important the patient is in this journey and this is not something that the healthcare system can solve. What we're really trying to do in this program is to create an environment where we can change the way medicine is practiced. We can change the way patients with diabetes are looked after by the healthcare system and we can change the entire experience um, that the diabetic patient goes through as they interact with the healthcare system. And that's really what we're trying to do. So we're building now a variety of tools from mobile applications and giving them the ability to chat um, uh, electronically with their, with their providers to monitor their care, to participate in the decision making so they can tell us how they want their care to be provided. Um, so they allow them to do their blood tests in their home. Um, and these, I think, will completely revolutionize the way um, patients with diabetes are looked after. Uh, eventually, what we hope is to train the next generation of clinician scientists uh, to work in this uh, very exciting field um, and uh, to be mentored by the current existing um, senior faculties that are in place. And I think we can build a pipeline over the next uh, five years or so. We hope young clinician scientists that will be working in uh, this area of cancer treatment. What the SIP offers is an opportunity for young uh, investigators or potential investigators uh, to uh, vary their usual training and take time to be uh, trained in research and to work in research as well as continue with their clinical experience and their clinical uh, competency. I think the key to, to getting younger people interested in research and building their careers uh, as clinician scientists is, is, is role models 
and, and seeing something that they see that they would like to do in the future. So I think having the, the unique strengths of the program, having the basic science communicating with the clinical, communicating with the public health, is a really good role model um, for people to see how science and clinical medicine can interact to drive research. And it's really an exciting time in the field of tuberculosis because there are all these new technologies coming on board. There's a sort of global uh, mission to try and bring down the TB numbers globally by 2035. And I think if we can find a new drug or find a new combination or better ways of delivering that, that would improve treatment in a, in a major way for global health, both regionally and in Singapore and, and across the world. If you have 20 patients in your clinic on a given day, maybe you work hard and see 30, if you can do translational research and change the field of medicine itself, then you have the possibility of helping not just your patient panel, but thousands, tens, or even hundreds of thousands of patients per day. Being a, an endocrinologist, engaging in research through this program um, sort of instills a, a kind of discipline in myself to interrogate and have this mindfulness to look back and think back, reflect on my own practice uh, in a more inquisitive way to see whether the things that I do actually result in a good uh, or a beneficial effect. I think that the SRP is an excellent platform because it provides uh, the opportunity for us to um, do research that would make our clinical care better. This platform actually allows for a protected time uh, that would allow you to provide clinical care and yet um, have time for our research um, practice. Uh, so it, overall, I think it's a good um, uh, platform. And I think that the NUHS sort of provides that environment because we have the patients, there's no question of that. We also have within the SRP program several investigators who have been doing research and innovation for a long time. And then finally we're backed by an entire university that has all sorts of um, skill sets that we don't usually see in the healthcare system, engineering, computer science, uh, business, management, uh, chemistry providing an environment within the healthcare system where there's mentorship and coaching for innovation and then finally making sure that the innovation goes into the clinic as fast as we can so that our young doctors really can feel and see within their lifetimes that they've really changed the way healthcare is delivered.